you just get this out because my face is covered and no one wants that, do they? You don't want that, yeah? I to be honest, it would be easier for me. I find it very often throughout the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure many others do. In fact, you might as well block my screen out and just do the audio. <laughs> you know what? Did you did you see that that link I post? Ed Lee, Ed Lee, he heard on the grapevine that Jeff and Matt, no less, were coming together, and he just had yeah. to step in and start his own show with all of his action sports mates and his editing skills. <laughs> Well, we're going to include this just to show everyone how prepared we are. Oh, and by the way, it's Danny Hart we're interviewing. <laughs> Oh, that's it, Danny Hart. Yeah, Danny Hart, yeah. yeah that, he, he's kind of going. all right in the world of downhill motorbiking, uh, <laughs> mountain biking even. Hey, welcome back, Jeffrey. Um, we have our second show, even though it's kind of our third show because we like to talk for an age with our, with our guests, <laughs> yeah. of the Crowfro Show into its second week. How, how are you feeling about the first rendition? I got quite excited watching it on the big TV last week. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I didn't watch it on the big TV because I'm not that vain. Um, I watched it on a little computer screen. Or technically but, savvy is what you actually mean to be able okay, to get it. That's yeah, actually yeah, it. Yeah. That's it. My smart TV is not that smart. And neither, no. is, <laughs> neither, is, and neither is the operator. So um, I watched it on, uh, as, as I'm looking at you now. But yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was great talking to Johnny Ray and, uh, and Dan Reardon. And I'm looking forward to talking to our next guest, yeah. You, you were just about to fake the fact that we were about to talk to... What do you mean a separate intro? I'm confused well, now. Well, it's not I'm a separate intro. Good. We're doing the intro after the fact. What? Well, we are doing the intro after the fact, but we can actually talk about the, in the, the actual... Oh, oh, I see. That's balls that up then, isn't it? Yeah, no, I like it. We're going to... So if you're watching this... Hey, yeah. you've got, we've, we... <laughs> I thought you meant, well, look, let's just get rolling and then, and then make out like we're doing the intro after. Uh, okay, I, I'm, We're not going to make out like we're doing a, it. We are going to do it after ride. the interview, which we did what talk a, about <laughs> last week, but, but forget about it. So we have got another world class. I mean, why do we keep on need to say, keep on keeping on needing to say world class? Because obviously you get the idea now. That's, that's, that's how we roll. But that's what we're that's, trying to achieve. Yeah, It is kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have got to have done very, very well in the sport to make it yeah. onto the Crow Fro show. And you've got to be kind of cool as well, which our first two guests very much were. And it turns out, having not met him before, our third guest was too, Danny Hart, multiple world champion in downhill mountain biking, no less. Here, yeah, Jeff, you know yeah guy, I've known Danny cool. quite a while. Um, yeah, through, actually, as always, through uh, just mutual friends, motocross, you know, that kind of environment that we live in. You know, ultimately, a lot of our sports are interlinked, um, particularly obviously now with clothing brands and energy drinks and et cetera. So you end up meeting an array of different people from different sports. And that was, well, the whole reason we decided to start this uh, Crow Fro show. It was. So, yeah. So it was good to catch up with Danny. Um, it was. He's always it was another good chat. He's a, he is a very down to earth, humble guy. But as anything, if you're, like he, you know, if you're in the moment and you're super relaxed, that Danny seems to be, he's got his feet firmly on the ground. He never seems to get too flustered over anything. And I guess... That's why he's done as good as he's done, and with a bucket load of talent as well, of course. Yes, that is going to be our third interview into our second week, which um, this will be going out right after the clap for carers at eight o'clock or just after eight o'clock when you guys all come in, clapping, hollering and whooping, or our NHS and our NHS frontline staff. And we've kind of tied it in together because we're trying to do our own little bit as well as start the show don't get us wrong we started this show just because jeff and i wanted to do this for a while but we thought why not do our own little bit for those frontline staff who are working so hard and so we set our own virgin money giving page links will be popping up and be in the description in and around here for you to click head along donate a little bit of money put a comment there and your name there and what are we doing is getting some goodies from our riders to throw into the pot and we will be drawing those soon. We haven't quite collated because we've got guys all over different parts of the world yeah. that we're trying to bring together in a last-minute kind of uh, shindig because this has all come together over the past 
two weeks, no less. <laughs> so we are getting some goodies together and we will be announcing on our social medias various channels as to how you can grab those. But apart from that, go and throw whatever money you can at the Absolutely. NHS charities, COVID-19 urgent appeal and while we are giving props to people that deserve it thank you very much to arena sports live or as we're going to be calling it asl tv in terms of our presence on their youtube page where you may be watching this and the people behind making it all look fantastic mantis media sam pascal uh, and any of the photos that you see of some of our athletes up on the page is john shrimpton also mantis amber with the creative grace weddle behind the scenes and uh you and I, we forgot to do it again. You know what we forgot well, to do? Well, yeah. I know. Well, because we're not very good, you know. <laughs> Can I speak for yourself? I'm averagely no, no. good that's, on occasion. That's what I'm, well, I was just going to say, it's the quality of guests that make the show fortunate. <laughs> Luckily, we are very much we, uh, despite well, the good. very beautiful backdrops that we've got. Sorry, yeah. So, um, my name is Matt Crowhurst, and this is... And I am Jeffrey Perrett. There or we Jeff, go. Or okay. Jeffro. Jeffro, yeah, yeah. So... Jeffro, Crow, Fro, and that's how we came up with the name. Genius. Hey, if you like what you see, and how could you not when it's this succinct and scripted and professional? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't keep a straight face at the end of that. I know. Could you please hit one I of these it. ones? See that other one? That, that, that button doesn't work, so don't even waste your time with that one. Hit one of these ones, and if you hit one of these ones, then you hit that little word that says subscribe, and you can stay tuned with our videos as we post them each week. Um, and that's our intro done. I think, did we cover all bases then? We, <laughs> I, we, I we, we, so. The intro was a show in itself. We, the intro was, we, we've actually given, given presents to our competition, idiots. Yeah. Um, and we've got an amazing guest. Enjoy our interview with no less than monumentally big star in the world of downhill mountain biking, Danny Hart. Yeah, that's it. Right. We you don't. ruined that. You ruined that. I, I'd said it all and you, you just had to add nothing. You just okay. made no actual words <laughs> and you just did this. <laughs> you can I've, done I've done enough. I've done enough. I've done enough. I've done enough. That's <laughs> hey. the wonder of post-edit. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I guess I better get started with that. Okay, you, you, you just go off and chill. Go and, have, go and have a corona like you seem to do at this time. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm having a... I'm having a meal actually cooked for me by Nuno. It's, it's great romantic. to have your own personal photographer yeah, and, and chef, chef in the house as well. Yeah, I know. Okay, I know. yeah. I'm going to invite right. John Shrimpton down and he can cook for me and take my photos too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Later, Jeffrey. I'll speak to you on WhatsApp later on. Yeah, I'm out of yeah. It. We'll, we'll, we'll sort out next interview at some point. Hey, um, next interviews. Did we mention that? We mentioned that at the end. Yeah, we'll cut there. We did that. Yes. Let's just go. Let's just stop. Did. Stop this. Stop this. All right. I'm out of here. Right, Jeffrey. Yeah, this is how it should be. I, I don't think, as we said before, let's just roll with it, man. We are leaving our world-class athlete wanting in the Crow Fro Show waiting room yet again. It makes us feel powerful, doesn't it? Just world champions and legends. Let them make them wait. Okay, where oh, is he? Our moment. All right, here we go. Crow Fro Show. Is it number two or is it? Is it... Let's call it number two. Let's, let's do a number two. You just get this out because my face is covered and no one wants that, do they? You don't want that, yeah? I feel honest, it would be easier for me. I find it very often throughout the show. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure many others do. In fact, you might as well block my screen out and just do the audio. <laughs> Here we go. Right. Incoming. Danny Hart should be three, two, one. There he oh, is. Hello, Danny. Danny, How are you doing? hear us? Well, yeah, you, you've got a posh set up. I know, there's lights and everything if you're looking around. Actually, everyone said that this actual mic on the last show sounded worse than his, so it, it is all for show. I'll take Danny. that straight away. D D Danny's been on for five seconds, and he's already being complimentary. I yeah, like ah, it. Winning the, winning the interview is over. Danny, it's nice to virtually meet you. <laughs> How are we doing? Very well, very well. Obviously, you two. I've known each other for a good little while, but it's a pleasure yeah. and a privilege to have you on our second show, just at the start of something huge, we, we hope. Thank maybe, you, it's maybe, a pleasure. With your help. I feel like Joe Rogan. Uh, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly the way it's gonna go, and I'm gonna be getting into MMA very shortly. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. That I thought is. I was going to get told off for putting them jerseys behind me, but it looks like everyone's got a little setup going. Oh, yeah. Well, no, because... you've got to, we're, we're getting on to motocross later on. We're, obviously, we're going to talk mostly about mountain biking. But Danny, Danny will appreciate the names. Yeah, you've got a good there. spread there. 
to have all sorts of stuff. Yeah, as well. Yeah, how, what, how convenient for you and I. Mm. There we go. But um, yeah, a good spread. I like that. It makes it sound like we're hosting a dinner party. I like that. <laughs> It actually looks like um, we are in the store cupboard of a, a, a very neat and tidy retail outlet of yours, Danny. With with are those are those giveaways or is that your actual walk-in no, wardrobe? I'll be honest. I've only just put them up there because I'm getting a lot of heat from sponsors trying to keep them happy. But I'm in like an <laughs> office wardrobe sort of thing. Like when I moved house two years ago, um, Sophia, my wife, put all this Kalak in. Is it? I think it's called Kalak from Ikea. So I can just come in and grab my stuff when I need it, when I'm going well, riding. Which it looks like it's ju- only fresh shirts. Only ever fresh shirts. So they are, they're all fresh and throw. for the new well, season. <laughs> that's, when you reach that level, Matt, I'm sure you'd have remembered those, those great times where you were at the top of your sure, game. Season. I'm not it sure I do. Like that. And to be fair, I think that Danny there is, might, could possibly pick up an IKEA sponsorship there, give them a good little. That you know, was other furniture awesome. store. Other furniture stores are available, of course. The shame You've got to be man. out and about quite often, Danny, you know, with your line of work. Obviously, we, you know, we, we can touch on that in a minute. But right now, obviously, we're all stranded at home. Yeah. So, um, so is yes. it time, Jeff, for I, COVID I catch up? Covid catch up and dinner. Yes. This is a section. There is a section. It's the only in. section we've got so far. That's all we've. That's all we've got. <laughs> <laughs> so, covid catch up. Go. Um, where, for how long, and how's it been exactly, Danny? So, what, what are we? Three and a half weeks now. Yes, yeah, something lockdown? like that. I think. Is it? Yeah. So, I've just been at home in Redcar for this three three and a half weeks and. I'm quite fortunate enough to not live in like a really small house. I have everything I need to still live quite a normal sort of life just from home. So I've got a little gym set up in my in a new garage extension I just had and got a, yeah, I've got a nice place so it's not too bad to be quite honest. It's worked quite well for me. I've been training quite a lot and just we've just Sophia's just had a baby so Yes. Congratulations. Uh, how, how long ago was that? Uh, February the 18th, so two months today. What a, what a selfless man he is. You noticed that Sophia had the baby. No, Dan, Danny had nothing to do Didn't with claim it. claim it at all. I had, I had nothing to do with uh, bringing her into the world, I'll tell you that much. But <laughs> was you there, though? He helped you, getting her here. <laughs> was you there? Was you fortunate I, enough to be around? I was on there, the, on the yeah, I was there. And, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't a very pleasant experience for Sophia, but... <laughs> Oh, glad I finished the same for you. <laughs> I'm glad you finished that sentence. Yeah. Well, it wasn't very yeah. nice for me, neither to no, be fair. No. But, but no, we're all good. And yeah, it's just been been a difficult few weeks, really, mm. just wanting to go racing. But I've been training hard. I've been getting out on my road bike a lot and been training at home and doing what I can and pushing my social media for the team. You know, I've got good it's sponsors be done. with Saracen and Madison and and everybody that helps the team out, and we've got to do our little bit for them. So where would you have been over the past couple of weeks, over, over the last um, three weeks, what was meant to be happening for you before so lockdown? So we had our first World Cup, which would have happened already. I'm not entirely sure of the dates of the second one, but that's postponed, and our third one has been cancelled. So I'd have just been, I'd have had one World Cup, I think, Probably just about getting ready for our second one, but yeah, we're uh, all up in the air at the minute. How, how many how many stops are there usually on the World Cup, and between what dates? When when does the season run for the? Yeah, the so, uh, so we were meant to start a couple of weeks ago in Portugal, and we finish September the twentieth in Leger in France, in the Alps. And um, we have, I think, it's nine World Cups this year. That's not a lot of time, is it, to then squeeze no. the remainders? No, that's the thing. And, and we're reliant on the weather, obviously, going to the ski resorts and stuff like that. And yeah, I don't think they get snow in the Alps like in September or October. I do think there's time, but they close down for the summer in September. And, and all the resorts, a lot of them are ski resorts so that's yeah. our, that's quite an issue they'll be in change over time at around about then Ugh. yeah okay. you know yeah so how's same that? story as with anyone how, how, how's that sorry say that again Matt. i was going to say same story as with all of us yes. absolutely nobody has 
a clue. Yeah. What's how's that? Happen? How's that personally affected you, Danny? Were you, you know, coming into this this year? Were you, you know, obviously you want to go and race. We we all know that. But did you feel that you were in a good place, ready to go? You know, and um, yeah, I feel like I was in a good place and ready to go. The first World Cup was a little bit standalone, so we had we trained for that, and then maybe I wasn't at my peak, if you like, looking back now, but because of everything that I've been through this, this off season with having a baby and getting married. But now, like I've been training really hard at home and I'm in a good place. My, my road, I've been doing a lot of miles on the road, so that's helped me, but I just can't see when we're going to go racing. And sometimes it sort of gets you down a little bit to think, yeah. when is it actually going to happen? But I do feel like I'm progressing in my fitness and, and in my gym work because I'm doing a lot at home but I was definitely ready to go and we'd, we'd just been to where the first round of the World Cup was scheduled to be doing our suspension testing with with Fox and we'd got our bike to a really good place the, the Saracen was was flying. So what about you you touched on it there obviously getting married and having having a child is a, a massive life experience a changing experience whatever did you Maybe not underestimate is probably not the right word, but did you did so? You just said like you that was possibly took your eye off it a little bit, understandably. Yeah. With, with training and everything, and and maybe you know um, that that affect your performances or mindset last year at all, did it? I think the issue was leading up to Sophia having said he was. I was struggling to go away from home far. Yeah. Like, and I don't have lots of downhill riding around my house I have to travel quite a bit so that kept me at home like not being able to do long journeys so that was like a little bit difficult but as soon as Sophia had had said yeah, I was away like testing because everything was yeah. good Sophia was at home and we had help from family and stuff like that so that was good but in leading up to it I guess I had to sort of stay local and that was quite hard but I did manage to do my training and do everything like that but we had a really tough winter as well with it just seemed to be windy and raining for a little bit for, wet from that first storm that we had I don't remember what it was I like, called. I like the way I like the way Danny threw in that it seemed to be no it Danny, it no, was. It really was. It really, <laughs> it really was. We were really all was. sitting looking at the same imagine, thing. It you really didn't imagine that. It really was bad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was hard work for training. So this past few weeks, been stuck at home, training and resting around the house. has been, I've took the positives from it as opposed to the negatives. This could be part of the, obviously, because I don't think we've officially closed the uh, COVID catch up, but this is, this could still be part of it if we haven't Well, I mean, what, what, what so you when have... you get out, when you get out on bikes at the minute, Danny, are you um, are you getting like the looks from people? Are you actually managing to get out on a bike at all? Or are you completely confined to it indoors at the minute? At the moment, I'm I'm going out on job. my road bike. Job. This is key, true. It's it is work. my job, <laughs> and we <laughs> actually have our own bike park, but that's close to the public. Yeah, and it's really difficult because I could be up there doing runs, and Sophia could be shuttling for me, and but with it being closed to the public, like really like 100% nobody must go there, then it's not really fair that I go there, even though it is my job. Yeah. So it's really hard to juggle it. And yeah. I've and the risk been, of injury, I suppose, you know, also not yeah. only that, you know, that, that would be, that would be all over, wouldn't it? All over yeah. the uh, media in your sport. Yeah. If you did go out, so, smash yourself it, up. And then yeah, I'm, well. I'm getting out on the road bike. And yeah. like, in fact, I went out, not yesterday, the day before, and did I did fifty five miles? And <laughs> what was strange was I don't I don't know I do that in a year. Yeah. <laughs> how many? There was no people on the road, and it's funny. I was listening to something yesterday, and they said the road traffic at the moment is the equivalent to the nineteen fifties, and it, it was quite scary to be honest. Yeah. Like I was riding for 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 quite long periods of time, and there was. Not one car coming past. It was, it was quite weird. That's like that's like living on the South Island of New Zealand. That yeah. Or down yeah. there where you are. Or yeah. where I am. Yeah. yeah. Not much happens yeah. down here. Can either. I just yeah. pause one second? I've I've poised this shot so perfectly, and I've got a doorstop. What is he doing now? 
just ruining my shot. What? What? It was a doorstop ruining my shot. I think you. <laughs> Not just that I wasn't that. listening to you, Danny, but uh, I'm um, the peripherals I, going on. That looked to me like you made any excuse to show your um, show your buns there, because you, you did. <laughs> and that is where your mind goes time. every time, Jeff. Well, Come on, I, you you've got know. a guest. Hey, hey, Danny. Um, one thing that actually, Jeff, we haven't touched on too much, but within with anybody working within the sporting world, the events world, um, as the three of us do, obviously not quite in the same way as you as you as yourself. We spend an awful lot of time away from home. I personally cannot remember the last time I've been at home for three weeks straight w with my family. Um, obviously, that's a little bit of a, a change in lifestyle setup. You, you said you looked at the silver lining. For me, I've kind of, I kind of loved it because I'm laughing. I tell you, I got to stop you. There. I'm laughing because I, I know your missus is probably going, yeah, and I, I, I can't she's, wait for this to end. She's seething. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm happy just being at home, just being uh, stuck at home. Have, have you been able to find the positive in it in that way, aside from missing out the riding? So for me, obviously, with Sophia just having Sadie, well, yeah. us, us both just having Sadie. That's been, it's been really cool for me to see Sadie growing the two months that she's been on the planet. And yeah. Because potentially I was going to be away for a little bit more than, or obviously a lot more than what I have been. And it's funny as well because Sophia would usually travel with me. And the start of the season this year, Sophia wasn't going to be able to travel with me. So yeah. she'll secretly be buzzing that has been cancelled because she didn't miss any of the racing yeah. and she's a big part of my program so it's been like i said it's, every cloud on it's the program line. replacing the word life there sorry she's yeah. a big part of the, of the of the whole package like of racing yeah like yeah. we go in the camper all summer and, amazing yeah i mean obviously knowing sophia like I, like i do you know she's obviously that's been a big part of her life as well prior to, to meeting you anyway, you know, you know, yeah. so it's like, um, she's fully aware of what's, um, what, what, what needs to be done, I suppose. So that must've helped in your yeah, early sure. stage in your relationship, not, you know, cause I'm, I'm sure at some point the three of us have been there where you've, you've been in a relationship where somebody doesn't really understand what, what you do. And, uh, and that always causes a little bit of friction. That must make it a lot easier. You know, that's why it, 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 she is probably buzzing that you didn't get to go away because she'd be missing out on the traveling for the first time ever. Yeah, exactly. She, she's sick to the stomach of the thought of watching me race on Red Bull TV. <laughs> she's never missed it. So, um, And yeah, she's a huge part. Like you said, Jeff, she's traveled summer after summer herself with motocross. And, and yeah, I have had girlfriends before where it's they don't necessarily understand but mm -hmm. Sophia 100% is all in on it all works out um, in the end Danny it all yeah. works out in the end I'm sure we've all been through that having Sadie like we have to I'm not as at the forefront of what has to be done but yeah I think at the moment it's because I aren't racing as well so yeah it's um it's new for us us all yeah, it is. Being at is home. It given you, has it given you, maybe it's too early to say because you haven't been racing yet or whatever, but has it, after the difficult times of, like we, like we just spoke about, the lead up to uh, getting married, having, having, to, you know, having the child, do you now feel um, like more motivated now you're a father? Is, that, has any, is it too early to say with that? It is funny. I've been, I've, like the other day when I was out on the road bike and I'd, I did a big loop and I'd done quite a lot of climbing and then I turned round at the end and like to head like back home, I was like 20 miles away and it was a headwind. And I'm thinking I've got 20 miles of this headwind to do. And I would never normally put myself out there to go that far or anything, but I, it hasn't consciously been a thought of like, oh, I need to do this now because I've got a family to look after, but it sort of just has happened. Like as I feel like I've, sort of been training harder but not so like not on purpose it's just seemed to have happened and yeah I think that may be what it could be but it hasn't been a conscious thought it's just how it's fallen just a natural like yeah. lift you can't this is how it should be this is yeah, absolutely it's exactly sure. how it should work nice. yeah I see I, you had your I did actually think about it the other day when I was riding like this is strange like I never really sort of 
ride this far or do this loop that I've done and I actually want to do it now which is it could be a sign of my fitness and everything else going on as well so well just, yeah just the, well uh, the, the, the silver lining in some form I see yeah. uh, Matt that you had your kids out in the garden this week um, on makeshift wakeboarding equipment or was that yeah, an old so, so Danny you may or may not gather from from the the background yeah, there the weight 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 is my thing so yeah um i am i am that pushy dad the kids are not going to forget about weightboarding over the next however many months they will be <laughs> strapping that board on in the garden whether they like it or not <laughs> so what was you doing there just because i'm intrigued now i'm now interviewing uh matt i don't know why so you had them uh like on a on a bit of wood is that perhaps in their balancing then was it was yeah so we hit rails and stuff same way as skate parks so okay. you hop hop right. on and off rails um, and I've got, got wood. Like, board. Pardon? I just got an indoor board. I saw the video of that. Of you, of you crushing, Was crushing the chat? can. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, yeah. Yeah. I saw that too. Yeah. Good stuff. That we need to do indoor board challenge. Have you got anything you can balance on back there, Jeff? I'd love to see that. I've got a um, like an oil spent, can and a plant. Because I'm so light on my feet, I could balance on the toilet roll. I've still got three <laughs> bottles of Corona left here from, from the interview with Dan Reardon, which I haven't cleared up yeah, yet. Yeah, very inappropriate maybe choice I, of drink. Maybe I yes. could stand on that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure I could balance on something. Uh, okay, so that, that, that's going to be... We're going to do the toilet roll keepy-uppy, Danny, but some Indo... Have you done... Before you got your Indo board, have you been on no, an Indo board much nothing. before? No, never. Or if okay. there's one in the gym, I've maybe jumped on it, but I've never spent time. Oh, there's there's plenty of TVs and ankles you can break on an indoor board. It'll be great, but they are lots of fun. <laughs> they are apart, lots of apart fun. Okay, from, so, okay, yeah, you can't go on, Matt. Go on. I was going to say, yeah, we're going to have to come up with some sort of challenge on the on the indoor board. I, I don't know what it would be. Go on, Jeff. What's next? Well, I, I was going to say, Danny, like with all the riding and stuff that you do, and the training and traveling around the world and stuff like you know, and all that what what do you is there anything that other than now that you've obviously got a family to, to look after and spend time with before that what what do you what's your downtime what how how do you sort of get away from the madness of of you know being a high profile downhill mountain bike rider yeah to be honest there isn't many things that i do away from two wheels like i thought you that know, was the answer is, like i ride a lot of motocross kawasaki uk were were really good in and Madison and everybody pulled together and managed to get me a, a KX250. And I'll tell you I spent a lot. I've got to stop you there. I hold that thought. The reason I've got to stop you there is because, well, I got a bike out of Kawasaki. You've got one. Somebody else is gagging to get a bike out of Kawasaki, <laughs> but yet hasn't had one. So because you haven't been putting your finger out yet, Jeff. I know the right person. I know the right person, <laughs> but he's not been helping. Well, the reason why you've got to prove your worth first um you know so you've got to improve your skill set a little I bit i proved my entertainment I proved, I've, I've proved my entertainment worth you've got that i mean danny's obviously got a high skill set I, I have you know to, um, to, to, to fill you posting. in to fill you in here to fill you in here danny um it's the ongoing joke within the world in which i work alongside jeff which is commentating on motorbikes that i like to fall off motorbikes quite a lot and really? probably need to put that video footage up Fuck, fuck, fuck! Oh shit! Shit, 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 shit! Yeah, my shoulder is definitely out. We need uh, to take him out riding, right. Danny. We need to take him out riding. So yeah, sorry to butt in, but I just thought I'd just nip that in the bud before he starts getting the violin. All right, all right, all right. All right. I want to buy. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, <laughs> So you do a lot of motocross and um, yeah. So the cows yeah, actually... from like the end of my season through till usually the new year, I'll ride. Excuse me. Hey, sorry. Hey, hey, get off the phone. They put him on the. Pr that's that's Sophia. Just checking in on him. Yeah, so usually from the, the end of my season through to like the new year, I'll ride motocross as much as I can because I don't really get to do it in the summer due to the risk of injury. So that sucks a little bit. But um, yeah, I ride a lot in, the, in that fall sort of season and I really love it. It's like a, a hobby of mine, I guess, if you like. I spend hours watching YouTube videos, watching the Supercross, watching everybody 
ride a motocross and so I like to try and do it as much as I can when I can. So I you know. Do you? I was going to ask the same question we asked Johnny Ray because th there was there was the decided opinion between Jeff and I, and actually it was an opinion. It seemed fact by the end, by throughout the interview that Johnny likes riding off road more than he does on road or track. Um, but in his contract, he's not allowed to let wheels get airborne at all. Do you have any Supposedly. such clauses in your contract about other sport contracts? I didn't know. I didn't until you said that. <laughs> okay, so that's going to put a downer on the rest of the interview. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. No, no it's fine. It, literally, you're at the start of this show, so our viewing figures haven't skyrocketed yet, so you're safer than now. i, I got to say as well, I, I actually think this is my personal opinion because I've had a little go at, at both. Obviously, I've raced motocross and done a bit of downhill back in the day. And I think Danny's chosen occupation is far more sketchy and dangerous than what motocross is anyway. Oh, my gosh. I, I, um, I, that's my your, personal opinion. But, in your you know, opinion, though, I think when you can do it like you do professionally, like, uh, it's all relevant, isn't it? Like, you wouldn't potentially have a little tumble like I might riding around fat cats or, and just tweak your knee. But if I go ride downhill, it's it's all yeah. relative. So, I suppose, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But that's why I try and only ride until the new year. It's not in my contract that I can't ride, but it's yeah. on myself <laughs> that I don't want to put have to call my team manager and say, look, I've tweaked my knee riding motocross. I'm not going to be able to do the first World Cup. I don't want to put myself in that position. No. Never mind him in that position to go to his boss and say, we pay Danny all this money to come racing for us and he's tumbled off his motorbike and now he can't. It's that mutual you know, respect, isn't it? We were talking about this with Johnny. Johnny gets a team that understands him, you know, and, and understands that's his background. I mean, it can't be that bad because like we just spoke about, the guys at Madison in particular kind of yeah, almost encouraged exactly. this arrangement with Kawasaki for you to have a yeah. bike anyway. So they're yeah. not overly down on it. I did manage to get to ride in some nice weather a couple of weeks ago after like my first World Cup had been cancelled. I had a big gap now until when I was potentially going to go racing, which is already, which is also being cancelled. So I spoke with my coach and he said, at this point, I was like, what the hell do I do now? I'm, I'm like overdoing the normal thing of training, getting ready for the World Cup. I think I need to do something different. Can I ride my motocross bike? So I got out and did a couple of days with um, Carlton Husband, who is a friend of mine from up north. And we went and rode and I got to ride in the nice weather. And that was really cool. But since then, we've been totally locked down. So... Yeah, the bike's just sitting there. Carlton's a good guy, and he's good. He's a nice little trio there as well, because uh, Carlton's friends with um, uh, Jordan Pickford as well. I guess you, are you are Jordan. As well? Yeah, yeah, I know Jordan. Uh, Matt, I'm if you're not, not aware of if you're not aware of soccer, Matt, or football, as it's called in the UK. Why, why would you use the American term for it? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how about our international you know, you audience. Might... You're quite right, Jeff. Sorry. Exactly. Or yeah. or how what your take is on football, because you might not be into it. I've never asked you. I mean, anyway, I think the, uh, the the um, English uh, goalkeeper. Yeah, no, no, I, I recognise the names at least. I'm not that out of the loop. <laughs> um, hey, just can I can I just in your honour, Danny? Um, we, uh, Jeff said uh, the exciting news that you you were keen to come on, which we're very much appreciative of. Um, I got my bike out. I managed to go up around the hill. I'm on the south coast in Chichester, so around the Goodwood area. So bombed out around me, and I've forgotten how unbelievably scary it is going fast down fire track roads it wasn't even a downhill through the woods it was just yeah. a bobbly road and you just realize how exposed you are to death at all all times <laughs> more so than a motorbike honestly it's... i think so i yeah. honestly I, I do i think the speed that you guys rattle down those hills and the margins of all the rocks the roots the trees and everything yeah there is a good argument to say it is more dangerous like you say we've got trees that less than inches away from our hands and um, from and there's lots of different variables in a run. So, yeah, there is argument to say it's more dangerous. It's not a, a wide tarmac track or a motocross really cross track where it's wide and with the, the room for error is very small. 
Now, on that, on that note, and we will get onto this later, because just be, be, before uh, we came on, I watched again um, your 2011 victory and your 2016 victory. It's good. And the, it? the, the, the variables good. between those two races were monumental in terms of the conditions. Yeah. Yeah, but just true. what you're talking about there, trees that don't move much, vertical drops and rocks that are slippy and mud that's yeah. uh, just mind-boggling. We, we're gonna, we'll put some links up somewhere to send people straight to those, uh, yeah, those things. And we oh, probably, they, we'll, they, try, cool. we, we'll they try and cut the videos in. They absolutely need to be, people let, need to dedicate time to, let, let, to, let, the, links, to the links that we're gonna put let's, up. Let, let's to let's hold off, let's hold off, Jeff, because we're gonna go uh, chronologically. Um, we've done a various catch up. We've gone kind of around houses. Let's start probably at the beginning. Take oh, us to place. the time when you got on a push bike first. Danny, how did it all start for you? What age and why, where, what, how, when? Yeah, well, I've, I've been in Red Cow where I live now for all my life. So it's just riding around the streets, I guess, as a kid as normal. Yeah. But I started riding competitively. I started with motocross when my dad was racing. And then so your I dad raced to, motocross? Yeah, yeah. Not oh, okay. like a high level or anything, but it was just, a, I think back when he was doing it, club level racing was much more profound, uh, much more, I don't really know, like bigger than it is now. I think like in the, it was. you'd get a 40 yeah, man gear every yeah. weekend, no matter what. Yeah. So I used to be riding around the infield of the track, chasing my dad around as, you, as kids do. And then my dad wanted to stop traveling. We were doing a lot of traveling, like by his standard, then it was a lot of traveling. We were like from my house to Doncaster every weekend, which then would be two, two and a half hours. So he wanted to stop the traveling. So he stopped racing and, and I started riding BMX just in the skate park locally. And then from there I went to racing BMX and then we ended up down right down south we're in burnham we're in bournemouth we're in we're at decoy which is a long way down there so yeah we ended up traveling even worse mm. and then the bmx racing was a little bit political you know there was a the north south divide was massive and we didn't really it was just a really not really our thing in the end so i had a try with mountain biking and at first i started with in fact i was sponsored by animal i was uh when jeff we were you, were you were you, at the same yeah. time, you ever teammates jeff? we were in a in a kind of yeah i think Not i really. was yeah no no we we, we 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 kind of were i was on on the sort of tail end of it at that point and that's just when around they started working with you you didn't push jeff out did you danny yeah, well, they had to make room was for these, <laughs> these. There's only so much budget can go so far. And, of course, you know, this, this young aspiring um, shit-top BMX are out to, uh, obviously, we had to push the old Merck off around the way. I don't mean that. The guys at Animal were a good bunch. Yeah, that was my first sponsor. That was Steve Kitchen back then. Yeah, yeah good old Steve. Yeah. Me out. And I actually, I remember going down there and I saw, like, the wagon. that They'd, they'd actually stopped racing the downhill team. But all, they still had the lorry and... I think I saw like the freestyle setup they had and yeah, that was it. Everything like that, and uh, that was in pool, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right yeah, yeah. Down there, so yeah, so I was sponsored by Animal for a long time, and um, they helped me. And then, then from racing BMX going to downhill, I was too young to race downhill. You had to be thirteen, and I was only like I think I was eleven. So for a time there, I was doing both, but the BMX was still at the forefront. And then as time went on, I ended up just going to downhill. And then, yeah, from then it just snowballed and we're here where I am now, it's sponsored snow by Madison it, and Monster it's definitely and snowballed. all it, cool brands. Yeah, yeah, it definitely snowballed, that's for sure. Yeah, um, like literally like a big old one coming down the hills. Yeah, I mean, um, so do you reckon, obviously get from a BMX background, starting off those early early days and note that skill set early days in your transition helped you with yeah, the downhill definitely. like when i first started on downhill everybody could see that i'd come from bmx i was actually clipped in as well like i used 
clipped in pedals from yeah 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 no that, that was you were clipped in doing downhill i mean uh yeah, at a young age because that's pretty I gnarly from bmx yeah. <laughs> so i had that and i i used to spin a lot like high cadence pedaling because of racing bmx and it's definitely a really good foundation for anybody wanting their young kids to get into downhill bmx is a brilliant place to start because you can start young as well whereas downhill isn't as accessible for young kids but I think you can learn BMX so much really from BMX, is. can't you? Um, it's not just yourself who's transitioned yeah, into da- sure. into downhill. Is um, it, what sort famous, of percentage? Famous, guys, well, is... it, it, there's some big names. That, obviously, Danny is one of them, one of many, I'm sure, that have made that transition into mountain biking. You had the likes of like Jeremy McGrath was yeah, obviously, yeah. that's where he learned. He Basically, he's put his hands up and said, that's where I learned my fundamental it's skills trend. was BMX. Um, yeah. And he went from BMX into obviously motocross and then become the, the king of supercross. I think he even had like Joel Smets, who he didn't, he, he didn't even start racing motocross until he was 18, but he yeah. used to ride BMX and do BMX racing before that. So yeah. I think you I think can Gautier like, Paulin was actually a BMX one. world yeah. champion as well. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. So it's definitely a good foundation for any sort of two wheel sport. Yeah, 100%. So we need to get out and do BMX as well, Matt. Um, so I've got my lad doing both BMX mountain bike, BMX mountain bike, and he loves it all. Yeah. Definitely, definitely his favourite. It's, it's. Uh, but then, but then, just after the other day, me flying down a hill, what I thought was flying <laughs> down a hill. All right, Jeff, before you cut in there. Sorry, what say what? Oh, I don't know. Like of all the sports, getting a lad into downhill mountain bike, and it's scary. See, we're um, we, we're jumping ahead a little bit. Of course, your little one is going to get on a bicycle before she has time to yeah. say anything about it but, mm. and knowing what you know from the life that you've you've lived would you gladly push her into into cycling as a, as a as a potential career path you know what i haven't even thought about it to be quite <laughs> it's honest a bit early you. days to be fair yeah. yeah it's a bit early days it's very early I days it's difficult for a woman in downhill to to make a a solid living off it i think it's the same in any action sport i think it's it's going to be difficult, but honestly, I'll, I know it's the stereotypical answer, but whatever she wants to do, it's yeah, totally up to her. But, oh, obviously, she'll be on two wheels as soon I was as say, possible, I would assume. Um, yes. with, with you in a background from a little bit from motocross BMX and mountain bike, obviously, Sophia from motocross as well. It's, yeah, it's, um, yeah. I don't, I don't, she should have some good I genetics. think it's going to be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's not I don't, choice. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> so. I don't think so. She'll be uh, she'll be into it, I'm sure. Yeah. Hey, where where did we get to? We got to you had basically eventually made made the, the the transition. So so what age was that at the point the BMX was done and dusted and you were full blinkers on mountain bike? So British Cycling let me race downhill two years too soon. They gave me like a a, call, a letter of dispensation to really? race early. So. I started racing when I was 11, when you're meant to be 13. But I think when I got to 13, that was when, like, right, this is it now. Like, I'm done with, I'm done with BMX. I want to go make this what I do. From then on, when I was officially in the categories, that was it. Then I would, I was converted. Yeah, <laughs> I was like the way like, yeah being dipl- slightly diplomatic with that answer. Yeah, it's good though. Who do you was love, your? Do, 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 do you love? Uh, like, um, before uh, uh, I'll start again. I'll pull my teeth together. Okay, so do you love every aspect of mountain biking? Like, would well, you just go on a blast that's up, up, up and down and cross country? Is it just the downhill you live for and that alone? To be honest, like there's a new sort of wave of enduro in downhill yeah. where it's the same sort of principle as enduro motorcycling yeah. or, or rally in the cars. You know, you have your liaison stages and then you have your time stages. And right now that doesn't really interest me that much. I'd rather I'm still all in mm-hmm. on, on downhill. Like I think I've looked after myself quite well over the years. I haven't had too many big injuries, so I don't, I aren't sick from that point of view. I still just love riding downhill. Like, I'm not all like super excited guy. I'm just like quite mellow. Just, I love riding my downhill bike, riding my motocross bike, and, and I, I enjoy riding my trail bike, but it's not something that I'm, super passionate about it's still just downhill is at the front of my mind right now 
is yeah. it a, is it a speed thing with downhill for you um yeah no not really i get bored climbing back up the hill <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, oh, the guy I mean you, ha- you have to climb. I would have thought, you know, a man of your caliber surely he gets like lifted up there or, or his bike. Yeah, yeah, for down yeah, just by people, go, by Sherpas. When you just, no, just when you're <laughs> out and about. <laughs> 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 um, I, like but is right it... now with this COVID and all this bullshit, like the weather's really good <laughs> though, and I'd love to be getting out on my trail bike. Like yeah, I, was, yeah. I was just in the garden playing with my bikes now, just trying to get things sorted and. The weather is so good. It's just, and the trails are going to be so dry right now. But I, the, I have to drive to get there, and I'm not allowed. So it's like, yeah, it's not. So it's kind ideal. of like a lot of these things, then, Danny. It's kind of it's it's in the blood, obviously. You know, as we're yeah. just talking about your little girl there, you know, and yet it's kind of in your blood from from your upbringing with with your with your dad. So I guess yeah, it's, yeah. It, 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 a lot of the time, we I think me and Matt have had this conversation. I can't remember if it was last week when we were doing stuff with um, with Johnny Ray and, and Dan. But it's just kind of like we do what we do. We, we can't you can't turn it off. It's just the okay, same for all of us, I suppose. Which is why yeah, we're doing funny. shows like, like this. And when people ask about questions it. about it, I struggle to answer because it's just what I do. I don't ever. Yeah. I don't really talk about it very much. You know, it's like I just I just ride my bike, and when people ask me questions i'm like oh, it's... when you have to really think about it it's quite <laughs> don't think about it that's the answer just talking think. about not thinking i just dive in with that question for me danny when i when i ride a motocross bike i think it's the one time where you know whether it's even sometimes when it's competition which i have obviously haven't done for a while where i can't even tell you what my, my no. mind's just away with it i, I yeah, can't even recollect what i've been like... thinking about what happened you know, it's that kind of thing. Isn't it I've called spoke about flow this state. a few times lately. Oh, is that me frozen? No. no. Sorry, no. I lost sorry. you a little bit there. Uh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Go, go on, Danny. Yeah, I spoke about it a few times over the past few weeks doing a few podcasts and things like this. That it's like when I watch a race back, and I think about it back and I watch a helmet cam, it's, you're in like a, a Zen sort of state where you're not thinking about anything and you, you don't really know who you are in that situation. You're just doing something. You're a bit like a robot. It's really crazy that I think maybe it's because I'm more of a sort of natural rider as opposed to someone who has to think about it these things just happen for me when you're in like a floor state sort of thing. And yeah, it's, it's a crazy situation when you're doing this stuff and you just, it's just happening. Even when I'm just riding for fun. It's a nice place to be in it. That's the point. You can't really explain it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's some, yeah. You know, I guess like, but when I tried, when I do motocross, when I ride motocross, say I'm at, Fat cats, or I'm at a hard pack track where the roots are along and out of the corners and stuff like that. I really do have to think about what I'm doing then. And yeah. when I think about it, like looking ahead in the corners and and look and just things like that, then I can come in and think that's what I was thinking about then. But when I'm doing <laughs> it on my mountain bike, when it's more sort of a second nature, I don't yeah. have to think about it. So I'm not thinking about anything so much. I think also maybe in your line of work, obviously you, you get practice runs. I get that and whatever. So you've got a mental picture going down the hill or whatever. But for you guys, your level of competition, when it, when it comes to the crunch, you've got, you've got one shot at it, as in you yeah. go down that course one time. Obviously a motocross race or whatever, you're doing multiple laps to think about the next lap. Oh, I messed up there. I get that mm-hmm. right. And I guess with, with what you do, you haven't got time. There's no going back. You, you know, you just got to go with the flow and you can't overthink it. Yeah. Maybe. That's what's quite hard. That's one of the aspects of our sport is that you get one shot. Yeah. Like if I watch um, motocross, MotoGP, F1, maybe not so much F1 because it's so close, but um, a lot of motorsport, you can miss one corner up. And yeah, it sucks. You've got to work hard to get going again. But us, we only get to go around that turn once. And if we mess it up and the other person doesn't, and when the gaps are so small to win, that pressure, it's, it's really intense. Yeah. 
Talking about your your oh, that's brilliant. your, your, your flow state in mountain bike in, 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 in when you're riding, Danny, and how you don't think too much while you're actually doing it. How do you then train your, the technical aspects of, uh, of, 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 of downhill? Like, how do you separate all the various bits that make you get into that flow state and train them specifically? It's hard to explain, really. I think at the level that I'm at, you don't necessarily need to go out and train specifics. Yeah. Like, I'll try and do different, I'll try different things in training, such as, like I'll think to break before the turn and not break around the cu- around the turn. I'll think in sections, just don't touch the brakes, just don't touch the brakes. I'll think that's not training. That's just balls, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what it takes. That's what it's like. You're about <laughs> mental training. You're all about mental. Ah, don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! <laughs> it's it's hard. Like there's some th- sometimes you'll go somewhere and you'll think like I just said about breaking before the turn and not around the turn. But if it's really steep, it's really hard to do that because you just pick up speed. And I don't, I know in motocross guys work on technique a lot. Like they'll go and they'll lift the clutch out the way so they can't ride the clutch. They'll do take the back brake off so they can't use the brake. And, and I have had that before. I've worked with a motocross guy in downhill. And some things just don't really translate, but some things do. Yeah. But, like, we get a lot of practice. At, I say a lot. It's not a lot. Like, we get practice at World Cups, and a lot of the tracks we've been to, we know. So I'm quite well known for being able to get up to speed quite quickly. And, and yeah, that's it, really. Is, is it a case of... A little. Do you, do you full-blown mem- memorise the track? You know what's yeah. coming where? I use a helmet camera every run, so ah, I watch I watch I watch helmet cams back. I time things off my helmet cam. You know where every rock and every tree root is by the time you you can't afford not to. Yeah. You're on the same six inches of track. Like even when I was a kid people had commented on how I do the same line every run into intersections and through jumps and yeah, so and is that every your, inch the track. In your younger career, have you ever uh, got the mental picture wrong and been on part of the track and you didn't think, you thought you was on a different part of the track? No. no <laughs> just, see? just no. He's no, got a memory no. like an elephant. <laughs> I think hey, that is must that, be as well. Is, 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 that, is, is that fairly true for the majority of riders who have reached the levels that you have reached and, and got a lot of big results? The consistent line every time every stop th- every every track i think over the years it has become that but previously in like different eras like you have had different styles and you still do have different styles where you get people that just like smash everything and just are less precise and they're more just like hold on have a stiff setup on their bike and just ride things out as stronger mm-hmm. guys but i think now it's it is more so that precision and and finesse is becoming more of a factor and then in your time speaking of um uh, because a couple of races i've been watching and actually in watching those two well well, and any downhill and then riding the other day when the bike's going up and down like this sorry what did you just do then that's what i thought you did and obviously my bike's nowhere near as good as yours but the, the 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 equipment side of things how often, what, what sort of ratio does that come into play? Like just simply popping a tire. Surely that must happen a lot. I, I, obviously things have advanced a lot, but it's amazing how the bikes can go through what they go through these days. Yeah, bear in mind, Danny, you're talking to a couple of idiots now. Don't know yeah. I think he's got that, Jeff. I think he might <laughs> I think have got he's that. that out. Me and my team, Madison Saracen, we work really hard on our setup. All, all off season, we're always working on different things and, by the time the race season comes around, we don't really get many mechanicals. Everything is in line. We know exactly We know how much pressure we have in the tyres, how much pressure we have in our suspension. We work with, really closely with the guys from Fox Suspension, Maxis Tyres and, and Shimano and Pro. They're our main, our main key features with the Saracen 
the Saracen bike and everything is accounted for and we know every fine little detail and yeah mechanicals in my team especially with me and my mechanic are not really a factor we it's not even on our radar at what point um in your riding career or was it was it a drip drip in terms of the increase in the size of the of the teams and the and the professionalism that you were lucky to be a part of when did that really happen at what point i've always career? been since i started racing the world cups as a junior in 2008 i've been on quite an array of factory teams and i've never really had to struggle with anything amazing breaking or we've always had a brilliant setup i've always been on great excuse me great oh, teams and and madison saracen is at the pinnacle of the sport and anything we we need we get my team manager will london's been working really hard on a telemetry we've we sourced i say we sourced the team bought a top of the range telemetry system this winter which obviously you don't learn how that works overnight so as the time goes by we should we'll figure that out more and just so we can find them extra tenths of seconds. I'm going to try and ask, I was going to try and ask a question that would make it sound as though I was asking the question for the rest of the public out there to understand exactly what that is. <laughs> I'm just going to ask, explain the telemetry setup for us. Yeah, telemetry, we have, um, I think they call them potentiometers on the, on the wow, fork, so it measures the fork travel and the shock travel. We have wheel speed sensors, so it can tell you where we're braking and what the suspension's doing at the same time with also with GPS so that once we get to the bottom of a, of a practice run or a race run, if we want to use it in a race, that they can see whatever the bike's doing at whatever given moment and they can see where I'm braking, where I'm not braking, everything they can, they can figure. I'm working with Fox as well and everybody yeah. working together, we can get the most out of the bike. And, and for you, who is someone who obviously feels it a lot more than thinks it, is that a new skill for you to learn to take that information you're being given and put it into practice? Yeah, so that's also something I've got to figure out as well. It's not just the mechanics and the, the staff that have to work it out. It's me. Like I am a very sort of feel rider and, and I do tend to be able to adapt. Like you could put... BMX wheels in my bike and I'd learn to ride it fast within the first 30 seconds which works well for me and works in my down uh, works against, against me you, as yeah. well because we don't necessarily get the most out of our equipment so working so obviously Will and my team have to work the telemetry out and so do I I have to learn to use it as well so I have to it's for us all to use it, it definitely works it's interesting i've got a story like that um back in uh i must have been 96 97 something like that when stefan Everts was riding for factory honda mark eastwood was also on that team similar kind of thing matt they they um honda brought out this bike at a test at the end of the year for them to ride it had so many uh wires etc on it it was all most of the fuel tank was all part of the kit so it only took enough fuel to do like two or three laps and they sent each rider out on track and i was there because i was a friend of mark's so i was also riding a honda but as a privateer but and then i was there uh, trustworthy enough to see the, the the data and yeah it's amazing now the difference in riders capabilities and what they're doing on the track at certain times um, Stefan's obviously renowned as being this super smooth rider, loads of throttle control, using the torque of the engine. And uh, there was two lines with a line in the middle, and, and his was just kind of like that, you know, nice and smooth, keeping it in. These two lines are meant to be like optimum performance. Very rarely did he go out of it. And then Mark Eastwood, who's a super really good rider, you know, Grand Prix rider. Um, but his was like like the Alps mountain range. It was just <laughs> like this, up and down and whatever. And yet the track time, the time on the track. The difference between them wasn't actually a great deal but the, one person would get the, tired with absolutely it. yeah do you see that the difference between between your, your teammates in terms of how the telemetry tells the story like a real different flow to a course to be honest uh, we haven't 
we haven't used it. Of course, you haven't used it. With my it teammate, yet. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. we have used it, but we've only got one system because it's quite expensive. So yeah. we have one system, and what we have used of it was more Will and my mechanic Scott trying to learn get it, the head round as it, opposed to us getting anything from it. Hey, we, so we, we jumped around stuff. again. We jumped around again, Jeff. Where, where did we get to? So we talked, um, you, you, you got into the World Cup teams, um, lucky enough to be uh, on some big teams from the very, very get-go. Um, at what point, did you at any point during that, getting the letter from the UCI to say you can ride early, getting on a team, getting on the World Cup, was there a point there at which you thought, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Yes, I'm going to be the best in the world. Did that click at any point? To be honest, even before I was on the the professional sort of side of it as a junior, me and my family, like we were all in on it from probably being a juvenile, like the youngest category, like I think from then on that was the plan was to take it to the big time, I guess. So yeah, there was always I wasn't the brightest at school. I was always well behaved at school, so the school let me go on Fridays and travel to races. And they used to put down that I was going for work experience. So stuff like that always helped me out. And yeah, we always had our eye on the big picture. I know it's easy, it's easy to say in hindsight, obviously, because you've done it. You've, you've been a world champion. Is, is, there, is there like a defining moment that you can remember when when you actually really can remember believing that absolutely in your own self-confidence that you're like i am gonna be this guy because i never had ambitions like that you know i i didn't have i never set set out to think i was going to be the best you know but there must be a point where you've got to start believing that you're going to do it yeah so it did take a while for me to then think right well this is it like my first year in in senior like elite was 2010 and I didn't have a a massive breakout year it wasn't till 2011 the year that I won the world championships in Champre where I had a couple of podiums and I was that was maybe the point where I was like right well this is it now I'm second year elite one of the youngest guys and I'm getting on the podium and then obviously winning the world championships in Champre like I did sort of cemented me yeah i'd say like for, you did i mean you probably made time. it made a decision then yeah. i gotta say i can i can remember obviously following your sport quite a bit at that time and well like i always have but i never put the two t- together you know like so like okay this danny hart i never actually stopped to think oh, that, not the danny hart that used to do the bmx with yeah animal. <laughs> and it wasn't until you actually stepped up and won the the, the, the way Oh, it, it's that Danny Hart. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm 28 now, and I've been, I've raced the World Cup since 2008. And, like, I still feel like I did when I was 20 or 19, that's when excellent. I first won the World Championships. And I think that's through, like I said earlier, not having too many injuries and, yeah, it's it's crazy to think that I'm one of the older guys on the podium now. Like last season, I was not the oldest guy, but I think Greg Minow was the oldest guy on the podium. And then, then it would have maybe been been me after that. And it's quite scary to think, actually. But <laughs> I don't feel that old. Like so. Me and Matt yeah. do. <laughs> we uh, yeah. Hey hey, we we we've got to it now. We've said it. First world title. And it'll be a perfect opportunity to stick that first video up now, just as you tell oh, us. We talked yeah. about feelings. You feel now like you did then. Tell us exactly what the setup was for that particular race, uh, for the riders that have gone before you, and for the feelings in the blocks. And while you're talking about it, hopefully we can get Sam to, to cut in. Uh, Sam to guide the editors from uh, Mantis. He's going to mm-hmm. cut in the footage because it's amazing to watch because it is abysmal weather <laughs> on that day. Like, you, you wouldn't walk down that slope. Never mind ride a bike at nine miles an hour. Give us the setup, Danny. No, it was really cool. Like, I'd had a good season leading up to that, so I knew that I was I had the potential to go there and, and take the win and 
think I had second in, in qualifying there to, to Aaron Gwynn, who had had a, I think that was his best year to, to potentially to date. And like he, he won a few races then by considerable margins in, in normal conditions. So he was flying. And yeah, I took the win in the final and with a run that I feel like I could have done again. It wasn't anything, to me, it wasn't anything really special. Like when I watch it back, it was, <laughs> I didn't really get out of shape. I didn't get lucky. I rode really consistently and really smoothly. And yeah, I won by, by nearly 12 seconds. So and it wasn't I think an event. That was a changing point in my Well, career. it was. I think, like, but the thing is, this is, my, this is my take on it from somebody that's not involved in the sport, follows it, likes it, doesn't do it. Um, it comes across to me as like a, a, an iconic, one of those iconic moments in the sport. You know, not just for you, but across the board. You know, the run, the, the, the margin in which you won, you know, the, 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 the like Rob's commentary on it and everything. You know, it's like, I guess, like Tiger Woods, you know, winning Augusta by that many shots, you know, that time. To, to, that's a huge margin. And I know when it's muddy, you know, obviously the times stretch out a bit further. Come on, you know, that was there's winning it and there's winning it. Yeah, it's funny though, like at the time when I did that, just the same as when I last won in America, you don't know what's happening at the time. You don't know that everybody's had a hard day. You think everybody's going to have just done what I did. And they clearly didn't, so yeah, it was <laughs> can just we, normal. Can we talk about the, uh, the, the, the little bit of showboating? Right near the end of the course in that in that race, getting that bike all sideways in the wet, quite high in the air, going quite fast in a World Cup where you were quite far ahead and had it in the bag and you still got the bike sideways. Was that, in, I mean, once again, flow state? Did you actually consciously think I'm going to get the tail out on this? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That, it, that is what it must have been like through practice the whole time. Them jumps were really good fun and I did it every practice run. And I probably said to myself not to do that in the race. <laughs> I'd had such a good run until that point. Yeah. I probably I'm wouldn't do fine. it now. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was just, I was enjoying myself. And when you enjoy yourself, you go fast. So uh, I'm bloody glad you did. Because yeah. it adds to the whole thing. I think Warner at that point is just about struggling to keep his, his well, his head nearly exploded at that point. Yeah. Are, are both of yeah. them, who's the other commentator in that video? Both of them are literally about to explode all the way through that. Yeah, the other one was Nigel Page. Yeah. I think he Thank was you. going more insane than yeah, what he was. Rob he was. was, to be honest yeah. with you. Good old and, boys. Yeah. We'll have to get them on there at one point. Hey, yeah. and from, uh, from then on, as, as I just glance down the CV that I'm reading up here. It's been a fairly mantelpiece busting career, hasn't it, mate? Did did you yeah. did you think after that first victory you'd one, still be feeling like you're feeling about it all ten years down the line. Two, be in one piece to be able to enjoy it. And three It's nearly still, ten years ago, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Still still be in, in the top echelons of the sport. Did you did you think that far ahead? I've not thought that far ahead. And like I was saying earlier, like it doesn't feel like it was 10 years ago. So it's, it's, it's difficult to answer because it's just gone on and on and on and on. And it's not really gotten old. I've enjoyed it ever since. I, I had a really strong season in 16. It took me a little while to get back to winning again after winning the World Champs. I had a can little you, bit of a... Can you put a finger on that in any form, if, if, if you could, with hindsight? I think... Um, I won the world champs like I did and then 2012 was a tough season because I had a busy off season after winning in 2011 like that. So I maybe wasn't at peak fitness. So then I was always behind the eight ball trying to get back to winning ways. And then I managed to get back there in 2016. I won three World Cups and then won the world champs again in, in Val de Sol in in very d different circumstances, like you said earlier, with deep, dust, powdery, brutal track, which is an absolute nightmare of a track when you use your nightmares just thinking about it. So, okay, so, okay, so for, for someone who doesn't know, looking at the two, the 2011 conditions, 
would supposedly give you nightmares, but you actually had more fun then than you did in that 2016 win. Yeah, in 2016, it was like really big holes, dust holes, like holes that you couldn't see, big tree roots, just powder. Like you actually had mud tyres on in the deep powder because it was that deep. So the tyres sort of act the same in a way you like. And yeah, I had another great run, which I feel like, again, I could do again and again and again. Um, okay. Going back, I want to go just go back to the first one, and then you said you struggled the year, like you know, the year after. Is that that kind of, I guess that 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 classic thing where it's all all new? You get a little bit like rabbit in the headlights because of the suddenly you're you're the world champion. You got this pressure, this fame. Everybody wants a piece of you. Is yeah, that probably sure, part of yeah. it? I think a lot of it though was my preparation. Like I didn't come into the season as prepared as I would have liked to. Maybe a little. A little bit more, a little bit heavier than I would have liked. I did turn it around. Like I got back to being on the podium week in, week out. Um, yeah, I wanted to win. But once you're getting on the podium week in, week out, just like in 2011, which I was doing, you will end up winning. And then I got injured just from a stupid crash practicing in, in Le Alp in France. Went over the handlebars on a jump and popped my shoulder out and totally had to have my shoulder rebuilt so then it's coming back again from that and when you think you're back to what you were in your head you think oh yeah I'm good let's just go for it you're really not you've got a lot of work to do to get that confidence back and then it was just ongoing and then I guess it took until 2016 for that to happen again and yeah that's when I got on that roll won the three world cups won the world champs um, yeah. So you've got two in the bag now. Have you come to terms with it? Uh, you know, when, do, when does it all actually sink in? Like when you won that first one, obviously it doesn't sink in straight after. I should imagine you cross that finish line. The place is going nuts, particularly after a performance like that. But I yeah. guess it doesn't sink in until what you get back to normality home and you're making probably something as Monday as making a, a brew or whatever. And you're taking the tea bag out and you go, good God, I'm world you. champion. It doesn't happen to me because uh, you know <laughs> snap like you sort of snap out of it because like I drive to the races in my camper I drive all around Europe in my camper on say we race on Saturday and then you you drive on on Sunday and you get back in the driving seat and you're like oh, oh I won yesterday and but it, on the road bit, again is it a bit it's of a downer a bit, that because I mean it is a little bit it, yeah it's quite I, hard to a flight home is like okay we we get home quick and then I see all my friends and then you've got hours and hours just world champion yeah, it is, guys it's like a bit of a reality check but I wouldn't do it any other way like but that's maybe what keeps you life. keeps you grounded that's maybe what keeps you grounded and and ready to keep going for more I guess yeah for sure yeah like I love being away in the camper and yeah and we the thing why I do it the reason I go in the camper to Val de Sol to Andorra to the Alps is I get to ride on terrain that is like what I'm racing on and I can't do that at home so that's why I do that. Oh there's road tripping and there's road tripping and that's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. It's the way to live it. So that's yeah. um that's just a couple of world titles and a whole bunch of other top spots in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> um and then still the the, the podiums um keep on coming. Uh, have you thought I'm, I'm going to guess I know the answer to this question because you've already answered it several times have you thought beyond the World Cup and the competition scene as in no okay so that, that was a no already yeah though, was yeah. <laughs> yeah no I have been like I won a World Cup last season 2019 with I won my first World Cup with Madison Saracen in in America over in Snowshoe in West Virginia and that was, I just got the feel for it, the, like the, the want to win again. And I work, I've been working hard and I just want to keep, keep on winning. I know I don't, I haven't won a lot, if you like, but there isn't that many people that have won World Cups and I've won four now. So 
Yeah, it'll do. Yeah, don't sell yourself choose, short. <laughs> choose a lot, to be honest. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to keep doing uh, yeah, it. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, I won, I won five Hanson Dorset Club Champion Motocross Championships. So, you know, I'm one up on you there, Danny. I was a uh, uh, European yeah. Junior Champion in 1999, yeah, okay. so uh, one up on you. There you go. Yeah. Um, uh, um, how, do you how do you find the other side of the business? Because, like, the, the contest scene, I think we could all safely say that, that you've, you've got down pat. The other side of a professional athlete's business, which has changed pretty drastically in the past 10 years in terms of... It, it always the same has been expected of you be that be that nice upstanding member of society and be fine and, and what the approachable person but the pressure on doing all this other stuff like we're doing right now yeah that's increased how do I you find that side of things i've done really quite well with my social media and my image in the sport i've never really had help with it i've always done it myself obviously monster have put the odd thing on madison work hard on the social media but I've done a lot of it myself and I've built up a good fan base. I am, what you see is what you get with me as well. I'm not fake or anything and and I'll stop, I'll talk to the kids, I'll take pictures with everyone. I don't mind, like, it's part of my job and I, I quite enjoy it. We have our own bike park and I'll go and ride there as often as I can. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I've, I've paved a good a good path. I think. Oh, see, that's good lip service there. You know what's going to happen, Matt. As soon as we hang up, he's going to get off of this call and go, God, I'm glad that's over. I hate it every minute of that. Talking to those two Muppets. Yeah. I quite enjoy <laughs> On the story. Like <laughs> no, he wouldn't do that to us. Like, I listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff myself, so I can appreciate how people like mm. it. Like, I love listening to, to boxing podcasts, to motocross podcasts, to all sorts of different things. And, that's because I'm fans of what I'm listening to. So if somebody gets joy out of listening to what I've got to say, then that's, if that's made one person happy, then it's, then it's worked. That's exactly yeah. what it's all about. As, as, as well as obviously. Before you answer. dive in with another question, Matt, no, which you go, probably Jim. got lined up. Um, at this point, talking about, you know, you're, you're out there on social media, you know, you're, you're a world champion, world cup winner. So obviously, you know, you're, you're a hero to many aspiring mountain bikers or whatever. You know, who was your... Um, Good question. You know, you know like, who, who did you... Not aspire to be, but who were your influences, you know, in regards of in that era you were coming up? Obviously, you know, we had, like we mentioned him already, Rob Warner, Steve Pete, all these, these British riders that came before you. Were they, were they influential in your career in any way, shape or form? No worries if they're not. I've just called them out. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's different for me because I've always, like, without sounding big, big-headed, I've always been around these guys i've always sort of known them yeah i've never been somebody who oh, i really want to meet so and so i really want to meet in my sport obviously steve so you never got starstruck really then with anything you've been grounded the whole time maybe like when i first started i remember one time i was racing in Coombe sydenham down in somerset and there was these two jumps in the middle and i crashed and i was obviously winded like you do you you make you're making all the winded noise and and I turned around and Steve Pete was stood above me. I was like, no way that Steve is picking me up. <laughs> but yes. So I uh, guess when I was really young it was like that. But as time's gone on and I've got to know these guys more, it's it's not so much like that. But obviously being a lad from up north, um Steve has always been a an inspiration to to me and to every downhill mountain yeah. biker in the probably in the world if you like watching mm. all the videos of him from over time but i've also like i've really i've come from motocross a little bit I've, my dad is still riding super bikes like on the track so valentino rossi was always a hero of mine you've got Jeremy McGrath, Steph Nevitz, Carmichael. You must have met, you, you've met, you. I know you have. You must have met a fair few of them and hung out with them. Yeah, right. McGrath, I know you have. I'm sure you have, haven't you? I haven't actually met McGrath. Oh, I thought you had when we was over in America yeah. that time. Uh, yeah, because we was at Mickey's place, remember? We were, we were yeah, over there together. Yeah, 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 I haven't met McGrath. I've met, I did, you know, on the MXGP, like they used to do the live show. Yeah, I did that with Villa Porto once. Nice. Yeah, like there's people in other walks of life that I'd love to meet. Like I'd love to meet like Tyson Fury. Like these are the 
superstars in different yeah. walks of life. Yeah. We've got him lined up. We were interviewing him yeah. in a couple of days. But you yeah. should have said, you should yeah. have said, you should have said, Danny, we would have got you on together. We can't, we can't back that statement up, by the way. talk to him about. <laughs> God, he, uh, he, yeah, God, he would actually uh, probably ruin us. I should imagine. Make <laughs> or, or make second us rate. one or the other. Yeah, or make us. It would be a good way to go out. Hey, we've covered the full career. We've covered family life. We've we've done COVID catch up. That was way back in the distance. Well, in the conversation, unfortunately, not in the yeah, reality. Not in the yeah. And on that note, Danny, thank you yeah. for taking time out to hang with us. I'm sorry that we made you wait at the top of the show. We do no, that to no, all our guests. To, put, put you on the fine. back foot. We right. will uh, be posting this very shortly, Danny. Thank you so much for your time. It was really nice to meet you. I look forward to us meeting in person at some point soon. And uh, you taking Jeff and I down a mountain somewhere. Oh, Danny, thank you so o'clock. much. I'll see you later. See you, Danny. Thanks for your Take time, care, mate. mate. Uh, have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. You later, Jeffrey. I'll speak to you on WhatsApp later on. Yes. Let's just go. Let's just, just stop. Here. Stop this. Stop this. All right. I'm out of All here. Bye, right, Jeffrey. Let me do my two step.